episode of Tobacco Talk Tuesdays. The tobacco we're going to be talking about today is Cornell and Deal Bijou. Now, Bijou is, um, this particular tin is from June of 2016, so it's got uh, two and a half or so years of age on it. Um, And it was, it's from Cornell and Deal. Blended by uh, Jeremy Reeves, and Jeremy Reeves is the head blender at Cornell and Deal. He's responsible for the Cellar series, uh, as well as the Small Batch series, and uh, many of the Cornell and Deal Christmas blends that that you're probably familiar with. Um, This blend was released in early uh, 2016, and it's part of the Cornell and Deal Cellar series. So these are tobaccos that are intended to be uh, cellared and uh, kept for some length of time. Uh, This one is suggested to reach its peak after 10 to 15 years in the cellar. I obviously didn't wait that long, but uh, (laughs) we'll we'll talk a bit more about whether or not it's worth waiting 10 to 15 years. So let's take a look at the tobacco. So Bijou is uh, composed of Carolina Reds, Bright Virginias, and a condimental tobacco, an oriental, uh, known as uh, small leaf Caterini. And Caterini is is actually a really interesting tobacco. It's it's a very distinctive looking. It's a small heart-shaped leaf, and I'll put a picture in here somewhere so you can uh, get an idea of what it looks like. Uh, It's grown in Macedonia, usually on mountain slopes uh, in, in Greece. And it has a very interesting flavor profile. It's 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 sweet and it's slightly spicy and it has almost a curry-like uh, sweetness to it that I find quite interesting. Um, C and D's been doing quite a bit of uh, work with Caterini in, in recent blends, and I know that McClellan had some blends that, that spotlighted Caterini. I, I've not actually had them myself, but but I know they got good good reviews. So the tobacco itself is a, is a loose broken flake and it rubs out very easily. I've already rubbed some out uh, here. Its uh, moisture level is really quite good right from the tin. It doesn't really require any drying. It's a little moist um, and it, it is topped by the way. It has a light honey topping to it that uh, doesn't really seem to have much of an impact on the moisture level. So I'm going to be pu- uh, packing it in this uh, Savinelli 311 uh, KS. And I have found that this tobacco uh, seems to, to like pipes that are uh, more narrow, taller bowls. So something like a stacked poker or poker uh, would, would likely be great for it. And for the most part, when I'm packing this, I just kind of twist it up, stuff it in there. And, you know, I try to be sure to get these little bits of kindling on the top to help get it lit. So there we have it. So let's move on and uh, talk about the the smell and the taste. So the tin note on this, it's really not that um, distinctive uh, when compared to other similar blends. It's it's got this strong, slightly sour, figgy smell to it that you get with a lot of um, Virginias or vapors, and there's some like grassy hay-like um, components to it. Very much a a Virginia. Uh, tin note, but but actually, with that figginess, it, it almost is more like a vapor tin note uh, than a straight Virginia. Uh, and this, of course, is a Virginia Oriental. Uh, so, it like I said, it packs very well. It lights pretty good. Uh, With broken flake, I always try to use that uh, twist tamp method that I've talked about before. So, get the top lit, and then just sort of do a little light twisting motion with the tamper, and then do your second light, and that really seems to work quite well. And there we go. In terms of flavor, this is this is actually a very unique flavor profile. That spicy curry flavor from the Caterini is really evident on the initial light. It's it's very very much a, a curry flavor, uh, and it's it's quite sweet. 
it's also a bit spicy and uh, initially the retrohale can be a bit rough on this so keep that in mind but very quickly within the first oh, I'd say five or eight puffs the Red Virginias come into play and they really become the dominant player uh, and they're wonderful in this blend they provide a very very nice deep sweetness and it, it plays really nice with the Caterini so you got that that curry spice with the sweet and, and it's, it's just a, a very very nice combination of flavors there is a slight sharp note in this that is probably coming from the bright Virginias and the honey topping is there um, it's not super evident it's just it's just sort of accentuating the the sweetness of the Virginias and really it, it plays a nice role in terms of smoothing in this blend so the honey is is smoothing out that space between the Virginias and the Caterinis and, and really making it uh, sort of come together as a whole and it's adding this nice mellowing note to the to the blend it's really really lovely flavor profile as the bowl goes on the Caterini continually recedes and by the time you're at the bottom of the bowl you're, you're pretty much smoking with would, would be a straight Virginia, a very good straight Virginia. But that flavor profile, the Virginia stays very consistent through the bowl. So the Caterini peaks on the initial light and then continues to decrease and the Virginias just stay dominant after the first few puffs and, and it, it's just a very good smoking experience. So let's wrap up with some final thoughts. So in my opinion, this is really an excellent blend that showcases a unique oriental condiment tobacco. I've not smoked it fresh as my tin was aged for uh, almost three years, well, two and a half years. <clears throat> but my guess is that it will age well. Um, and with some of the spice mellowing and that, that sharpness kind of dying away. Um, but I don't know that you need to do, do 10 to 15 years before you can smoke this. I don't think three years would have changed it very much, and I'm sure that fresh from the tin, this is going to be a, a really good smoke. If you got 10 to 15 years to put it away, it's probably going to be better, but uh, for my money, uh, right out of the tin, when it arrives, is probably, uh, a, 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 probably going to be a fantastic smoking experience. And while this is not going to be an everyday blend for me because I'm not a Virginia guy, It's, it's unique and tasty enough that it's the kind of thing that I'd want to have around for, for a special occasion. And I can imagine this becoming like a, uh, a Thanksgiving season blend for me. It's got that savoriness that, that goes well with that, that holiday season. So I hope you enjoyed hearing uh, about my impressions of the blend. And if you try... Bijou, I hope that you'll uh, share your experience either in a video or, or in the comments below. If you like these videos, please be sure to hit the subscribe button so that you can up get updated when uh, future Tobacco Talk Tuesdays come out. They'll always be on Tuesdays, but not every Tuesday. And be sure to like and share this video on whatever social media platforms you favor. Uh, that really helps us out here. As always, I thank you for watching. And remember, the only rule in pipe smoking is that you enjoy your next bowl.